Sure, again, thanks for joining us. Uh, coming off of two productive days, you know, us getting here Sunday as a staff, uh, putting the Buffalo game behind us, our team getting in yesterday. Um, again, going through our weekly quality control um, and then starting on our preparation for Charlotte. Um, yesterday as a team, you know, I don't think anybody in our building uh, comes away from our first game, you know, satisfied that we played uh, to the best of our abilities, though I do think there were some, some good things done in the game. Um, from top to bottom, I thought all three phases did some nice things within the game. The emphasis of us establishing an efficient run game, I felt we were able to do that in, in the game Saturday. Uh, we missed some things in the passing game, which we'll get worked on. Um, defensively, you know, I like the way we played defense in the front seven. Uh, for the most part, defended the back end, uh, limited the big plays, and then on special teams, being able to uh, create some momentum with some big returns and, and got great great uh, contribution from our kicking game. Um, as with all Mondays, we put that game behind us pretty quickly because of the short turnaround to prepare for our next opponent. Um, you know, the tough thing about this week for us is our first road game together as the 22 football family. And as we all know, it's always tough to win on the road. Uh, our team is uh, looking forward to the preparation that takes place Monday through Friday to give us a chance on Saturday. And, you know, for us, how we prepare doesn't change based on the opponent each week. It's uh, what we do. It's the DNA of, of what we feel we need to do to put out a team on Saturday that's going to have a chance to be successful. Um, I'm looking forward to getting on the practice fields today. Tuesday and Wednesday are our big uh, work days uh, where the, the brunt of our game plan goes in. Uh, for the most part, we got out of the game pretty healthy, um, which is a good thing. Our captains for this week, um, Colton Spangler, Tyler Baylor, as well as Jalen Duncan will be leading us down there. Um, and, and before I open up for questions, I definitely want to give a, a huge shout out to Francis Tiafo. Um, for the big win yesterday against Rafa. Uh, it was great to see him have a breakthrough uh, match like that and really proud of him having gotten a chance to know him over the last five, six years. Uh, he's been a dear friend of our program, so congratulations to Francis as well. Hi, I'm Maryland wide receiver Rakim Jarrett. If you've been hurt in a car crash, people will tell you you need a lawyer. My mom says you need my lawyer, the Jack Litch Law Group. At 855-BIG-DOG-1. Don't just get a lawyer, get the, the lawyers. lawyers. If you're hurt, listen to my mom and bite back with the big dogs. Mike, you've said over the years that the biggest improvement of a team is from week one to week two. Where, what big and what big picture and what little things are you looking to see a little bit better from week one to week two this year? You know, I think overall the efficiency on offense, um, if you look at it, to have 13 um, thirds down situations, and I'd say over half of them were second and extra long situations, whether it was penalties, uh, negative plays, you know, we can't be what I call a big little offense. Um, I like us to be efficient. If you look at that opening drive we had where we went down and scored, that's the efficiency I feel we need to play with where we're getting four or five yards and then we get a big play and then we keep that momentum. I felt too much on Saturday that there were some big, big little plays where we hit a big play and we'd have two negative plays. And, you know, to play good on offense, it, it, you have to stay ahead of the chains, which means staying out of the second and extra long situations, which puts you in tough third down situations, which we were in all, year, all game long. Um, from a, a defensive standpoint, we talked about it after the game, um, having watched the tape. It's just playing the deep ball. We were in good position. I thought there were a couple times some of the young corners panicked and uh, didn't necessarily play the technique. But um, you know, those are the things that I'm looking for, seeing us make those strides where all three phases uh, get better from week one to week two. And uh, I think we will. Mike. Um how much did, did Roman Hemby use last year to kind of get himself ready for a bigger role? And, and what kind of stood out to you in the offseason and preseason as to what's made him a good option, number one option for you? you know, I think Roman and all of the young backs, you know, including Antoine Littleton, um, you know, took it full advantage of, you know, the red shirt year. Um, we were very strategic, strategic in how we – redshirted those guys by playing them throughout the course uh, without burning the red shirt. And, you know, Roman and both Antoine both had pretty 
pretty big bowl games for us. They both scored touchdowns and were efficient running the ball. And I think you saw both of those guys benefit from a year in the weight room with RD, our strength coach, uh, uh, sitting in those meetings, even you know those extra 15 practices we got during the bowl game. Definitely benefited guys like those guys. And Antoine Littleton basically remade his body. Went from a 295 pound running back to 239 pound and ran with great power, strength, and um, really like what I saw out of him as well. Um, so, you know, I think they all benefited from those extra practices. Um, going in the spring with the emphasis we put on the run game, especially with the receivers being injured throughout spring ball. I think uh, the timing of our run game and the comfort level we have with the offensive line and, and all the running backs really showed up on Saturday. I like a few more opportunities for those guys, which, I, you know, as I said uh, at the press conference Saturday, will come when we convert those third down situations or get into the third and ma uh, medium or shorts that allow us to sustain some drives. Coach, kind of sticking with Roman Hemby here, we saw what he could do, just a glimpse of it on the field this past Saturday. In terms of his character and you know what he brings to the locker room, can you give us a little peek into that as well? You know, Roman is one of those guys that is very unselfish. Um, he's exactly uh, the poster child for what you want um, out of a Terp. Uh, he's a guy that goes to class. He's a guy that helps us on special teams. And, you know, here you got your starting tailback running down, covering kicks and doing all the little dirty work, the little things that a lot of people don't want to do. And um, to me, that's kind of the DNA of what we're developing as a team, a bunch of guys that are like Roman Hemby when it comes to the unselfishness. Uh, that comes along with you know putting the team before yourself, and uh, I think Roman is an exemplary uh, uh, example of what we want all of our team, to, all of our team to be like, and, and we're starting to get there. Hey, coach, wanted to get your thoughts on Delmar Glaze's performance. How did you feel he held up? You know, DJ, I think, graded out pretty highly for us uh, coming out of the game on Saturday. Uh, he did have one holding call there on the outside zone play. Um, where it's just a matter of keeping his hands tight and inside and moving his feet. But, you know, DJ's a guy that's played a lot of football for us as a young player and um, has a really bright future. I see him on the same type of trajectory that both our other tackles, Spencer and Jalen, kind of took with him maybe a little ahead of schedule, especially with how much he's been able to play and play at a high level for us. Um, when you look at Dante Trader and, and you talk about the leadership down the middle and to have such a, a young guy stepping into such a big role, what, what traits does someone like him have to have to be successful and, and be able to earn that job? You know, I think it comes from confidence. You know, when you lead as a young player, it starts with your confidence. And I think confidence comes from knowing your assignments, uh, understanding what it is we're asking you to do. When you have that confidence, it kind of shows out now and it allows you to now have an impact on the other players. And unfortunately, the safety position, much like the quarterback position, comes with uh, leadership attached to it. Um, here, uh, a young player, uh, we try to develop leadership within our team, and that's why we created the leadership council that he's been a part of since he's been here on campus. You know, the biggest thing that jumps out is when you're not afraid in this day and age, peer pressure runs society. And Dante's not one of those guys that's uh, afraid to call out a teammate, older, younger, uh, doesn't matter if they're not necessarily living up to our standard. And to me, uh, we, if we continue to have a lot of guys like Dante Trader, we'll continue to build this program to win, win championships. Hey, Coach, you mentioned Francis Tiafo in the open. Um, I was uh, curious specifically what your relationship is like with him and what his relationship is like with the program and how he represents the area, even though he didn't go to the school. Yeah, you know, he's a guy that grew up right down the road at the uh, Junior Tennis Center. Um, I've gotten to know Francis probably since he was 14, 15 years old. And uh, when I came back here as a head coach, uh, he reached out uh, through mutual people. And um, I kind of see myself as a mentor. Um, he spends a lot of time here in our facility when he's uh, in town. Uh, I know our training room, we uh, laugh because, you know, yesterday during practice, I saw our trainers all on their phones. and. I said, listen, we got guys practicing, and, and you know they, they take good care of Francis when he's here in town, and uh, he's been a great supporter of Maryland football. He's friends with some of the former players and current players. He's one of those guys like myself that loves everything DMV, and so uh, it's good to have guys like him around. Um, you know, he, he was looking for an opportunity to have a breakthrough win. Uh, I kind of see us in that same trajectory where we're a team that's kind of grinding in the dark <laughs> that will continue to um, push through and you know, hopefully get one of these breakthrough wins like he had yesterday. 
Coach, Jayshon Jones, he had a really big first half, some explosive plays. Just talk about what it means to have him back in the offense after battling back from injury for the second time now. Yeah, you know, he's the one guy that a lot of people don't talk about. And, you know, as I've said before, probably one of our top receivers in terms from a fundamental standpoint. And I'm glad that he was able to come back and, and healthy after, after battling, you know, two years of, of knee surgeries and still doesn't look like he's lost very much. Um, he is one of the guys that we count on to make plays for us on our offensive side of the ball. When it comes to the tenacity you want to see a receiver play, he's one of those guys that plays right there on the edge, which I love because typically receivers aren't those type of players. And, you know, he kind of epitomizes what I want the young receivers to mimic when he goes in and blocks safety. If you watch the long run Roman had in the second half, he went in and dug out the safety and covered him up, blocked him, and, you know, those are the little things that you want to see your guys do without the ball in their hands. And, you know, Jay Sean has uh, been one of those guys from the day he stepped on campus that's made a lot of plays for this team. Hey, Coach. Uh, Ty Felton had uh, a lot of opportunities um, this, this past weekend. What have you seen from him so far that's allowed him to get those opportunities? You know, Ty was a guy last year that came on near the middle to the end of the season before he went out with a hamstring. And, you know, you can't deny the type of speed that he has. He's one of the guys that can take the top off the defense with his uh, speed. Uh, he's made a ton of plays, probably had one of the more productive training camps of all the receivers. And he took a lot of uh, reps because obviously with Dante and Jay Sean being on pitch counts as we uh, bring them back the right way, he's kind of taken on quite a bit of that load. Um, you know, he's another a guy that will continue. I said it last week. I see us with pretty much six starters at the receiver position. When you, you know, look at how we're built there, um, he rotates in like the rest of those guys. He'll have opportunities because of his speed. And really, really, uh, for one of the younger guys, he has put himself in position to be a guy we can count on. Um, Coach, there are some programs who hardly ever play any non-conference road games. Do you think there's a benefit to going on a trip like this before conference play and, and you know, getting one under your belt? Or <laughs> would you prefer not I, to have I would to prefer either? to be playing at home uh, this week. Um, no knock on going down to Charlotte, which, you know, opportunity. It was on the schedule when I got hired here. Uh, as I've always said, we play the games that are there. Um, in a perfect world, you know, I think Maryland, we, we should be playing Charlotte here at home if we could. Um, unfortunately, these schedules are 10, 20 years out. I don't even know if I'll get to see my schedule because I think mine's don't start till 2035 or 2036. So um, just goes to show you where college football is nowadays. But no, great opportunity for us to go on the road together as a team, um, kind of get our feet wet on what it's like to go on the road where it's you against the crowd and the other team. And, you know, it'll be a great, great opportunity for us. Hey, uh, Coach, going back to the receivers, uh, Rakim Jarrett had a really good game offensively, but in the first quarter he had a really good play on special teams, acting as a gunner, and he tackled the punt returner. I just want, uh, what were your thoughts on that play? Because uh, he did a really good job flying down the field to make that play. Yeah, you know, that's something that I've been begging for out of this team, you know, you know, from the previous place that I've coached, you know, your best players are on the punt team and kickoff team. And I challenged our team with that because I think sometimes in college football, you know, very few players like Rakim come to Maryland to play the right guard on the punt team. They come to score touchdowns. And so, but if you look, and we pointed this out, you know, we went to the Raven uh, Titan game, and the first opportunity Che got to be on the field was on punt return, kickoff return. And so, you know, in our uh, effort to develop our players, you know, we are selling them on the fact that it's important and that these special teams plays like the punt team and kickoff team are big plays for us and our best players should be on those two teams and so that's an example of rock being one of our better players and he went down and made a play on special teams that really created some momentum for us and so um, I'd like to see more running backs receivers uh, instead of just our defensive players especially because of the amount of plays that the defense plays we've got some big skill receivers big skill running backs that can help us on special teams and I think that was an example of it. Hey, Mike, uh, so, in your review of Charlotte this week, what are some things that stuck out to you? They've got some playmakers that are maybe more indicative of how good they can be than their 0-2 record. Yeah, I think the big thing is us trying to figure out who the quarterback's going to be. I know both quarterbacks kind of have been in and, uh, in and out with injury. They're, the guy that started uh, missed last game, and then they brought James Foster in, who we know a little bit about, the A&M transfer from Alabama, uh, played last week and 
kind of up in the air which one of those guys will be the, the 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 quarterback. You know, they've got a transfer running back from Iowa that we know a lot about. We recruited him out of high school. That's a, a big time playmaker. Um, like everybody, they've kind of created. Um, added depth and changed their team a little bit with some of the grad transfers and transfer portal guys. They got a guy from Central Michigan that's playing their DN Jack position. Um, you know, that really number one is a, a does a good job. Zero's probably their best upfront guy who's kind of created some some havoc. They brought a safety in from K State number five that uh uh has seen in the two games we've scouted to be a really good player. So much like Every team we faced, uh, especially early, they've got new players that they've brought in via the transfer portal. Uh, this is a program Coach Healy has done a really good job of building this program. They've had NFL guys come out of this program. Um, as I told our team, you know, the team you watch on tape isn't necessarily the team we'll see on Saturday because this is a team that doesn't have much to lose or anything to lose so that we'll get their best. And for us, it's a great test being on the road for the first time. That in itself makes it difficult. but. Um, I said this last week, and I'll say this every week, so you might as well make it a permanent quote. It's not going to be about who we play. It's about how we prepare, what we do Monday through Friday. That's going to really dictate what happens on Saturday for us. And so how we prepare doesn't change based on Charlotte or Ohio State. I mean, it really doesn't. And for our team, we understand that. And that's, that's kind of what we've created, that type of culture. Mike, I'm sure you have more <clears throat> more than a passing familiarity with Jared, Jared Bernhardt and the story that he had, you know, obviously playing lacrosse here, going to pro day with you guys and then making the Falcons. Just what did you see from him from that experience, but also just how remarkable is it from a football perspective that a guy that hadn't played for four or five years goes from playing lacrosse and then 15 months later is making an NFL team? Yeah, not real surprising. I mean, you know, I've not been asked that question before, but I know I've taken a lot of heat every time he, he left here and won a national championship up at, uh, I think, Grand Valley State. Um, we actually evaluated him, and, and we offered him an opportunity to play for us as a wide receiver, and uh, he decided he wanted to play quarterback. And for us, we had a quarterback. So I'm not surprised at all. We actually put him through a workout, um, showed the skill set, I watched him in our pro day. He, took, uh, he had his pro day here with us and our team. Uh, a great example of what it's like when you come to the University of Maryland. I mean, I'm not surprised because everything this kid touched turns to gold, and it's it's in the DNA of the family. You know, I know a little bit about his dad who passed away, who worked with Billy O'Brien there at Houston, and so not real surprised that good things are happening to, to, to him because um, Jared's one of those special guys that good things always happen to guys that just work hard. He keeps his mouth shut, very humble um, type of player. So I'm excited for him. I saw his two brothers at our all staff meeting and told him that he made me look bad, but I did offer him an opportunity to play receiver for us, but he wanted to play quarterback. Thanks guys.